Hello there. Today I'm continuing with my look at some of the top Pinot Noirs being produced in the central Otago region, the southernmost region of New Zealand's viticulture in the bottom of the South Island. So today I'm looking at Ripon's Mature Vines Pinot Noir from 2020. Ripon is a beautifully situated winery, in fact possibly one of the world's most stunningly situated wineries. It sits on the shores of Lake Wanaka, most specifically on the western border of Roy's Bay, um, and they have 15 hectares of vines, and these were established in 1975 by Rolf and Lois Mills. So they were quite early planters of, of vines in this region. Um, the farm here had been in their family for three generations, having been bought in 1912 by somebody called Percy Sawgood, and today his great-great-grandson, Nick Mills, uh, runs the estate and makes the wines here. So it's still completely in family hands. The vines are today farmed biodynamically, although I don't notice any biodynamic certification on, on the label, but I'm not suggesting that there's anything untrue about that, but not all biodynamic producers necessarily have certification for that. It, it, it can be an approach without necessarily being certified as such. Everything's dry farmed and I believe ungrafted here. And they have a variety of Pinot Noir clones, as is, is often the case in central Otago. And a pretty usual selection. You've got Davis clones 5 and 6, you've got 2 bar 10 and 10 bar 5. There's the Lincoln clone, there are a couple of Dijon clones, 667 and 777, and then there's New Zealand's own special clone, the Abel clone, or as it's sometimes called, the Gumboot clone, supposedly derived from the vineyards of Romany Conti. And much of the estate's planting of Pinot Noir actually dates back to those original vines planted in 1975, as such the mature vines reference on the label. These are north-facing vineyards, and the soils here schist and clay with lewis and gravel. So a good combination of soils that are free draining and yet will hold enough water for the plants to continue to grow throughout the season. The fruit will be hand-picked. Picking took place between the 16th and the 30th of April in 2020, and the fruit from each plot was kept separate and each lot fermented separately. Fermentation took place with the ambient yeasts that had come into the winery on the fruit from the vineyard and the wine spent between 14 and 28 days according to what was necessary on skins for fermentation and maceration. Malolactic conversion was allowed to take place spontaneously in the barrel after fermentation and the wines aged for 12 months in French oak barrels with 17% of that being new and the rest being first, second, third and fourth fill oak. The wine was then bottled without fining or filtration. So let's have a look at this, shall we? As we've typically seen with the Otago Pinot so far, this has a nice dark ruby red colour. It's not particularly deep though. I mean, this is, you know, probably not even a medium depth of, of ruby there. The wine has 13.5% alcohol and eventually forms some, some tears as I swirl it, but they're not particularly pronounced. So let's have a look at the aroma, shall we? The aromas are very developed and really quite earthy and savoury. There are notes of forest floor. This is, this is a wine that's showing its tertiary development. The meaty touches, slight touch of spice, I suppose. Behind all that there's a very lifted, high-toned red fruit, delicate sort of raspberries, rose petals, that sort of note. So it's for taste. On the palate, that's lean, that's elegant. The very, very fine, very typical Pinot tannin. But actually quite, there's a grainy bite to the tannins there. There's enough bitterness in there that in combination with the acidity, it's really quite mouth-watering. Almost a tiny touch peppery on the attack. The light body to the wine and its delicate structure leaves sort of quite high-toned 
perfumed red fruits to feed through to the finish. The freshness is giving them reasonable length, but they don't have a huge body or structure. It's, it's surprising actually that the 13.5% alcohol isn't giving more weight and richness to the Mac palette there. But the fruit is sufficient that it, it's showing through as those sort of more developed fruit notes. Not quite getting the same extent of the savoury forest floor dried leaf notes that you had on the nose coming through on the palate. It's much more this slightly sort of velvety texture, delicate red fruit. I think of the wines we've tried, this is the one that seems most classically developed for Pinot Noir. And I think it's a wine that I'd probably leave for a couple of years just to allow the fruit to open up a little more. Certainly it's got the structure to age, its acidity seems fresh and that should help that as well. But yes, this is a wine whose style is much more secondary and developed and I think will benefit more from bottle age than the other wines I've looked at this week. So thank you very much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed the tasting. If you've found it of interest, do please press the like button. That would be very much appreciated. If you find you're enjoying our tastings, do please sign up and follow us on YouTube. That would be fantastic. Any comments you've had, please pop those in the comments box. Your feedback is always appreciated. And if you have any friends that you think might like to watch the video, do please pass it on to them. Most importantly, however, do please try and take some time and come and join us for another tasting in the very near future, won't you? Thanks again. Bye for now.